Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 30 in the Douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 31 in the RSV. Unto the end, a psalm for David in an ecstasy. A brief description of the psalm. In thee, O Lord, have I hoped. Let me never be confounded. Deliver me in thy justice. Bow down thy ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be thou unto me a God, a protector, and a house of refuge to save me. Because we place our trust in God, we ask that he will listen to our requests and save us. I think it's especially interesting that David refers to God as a house of refuge here, an image of a place in which to live. God is the goodness that we seek to live in. For thou art my strength and my refuge, and for thy name's sake thou wilt lead me and nourish me. Even if God doesn't save his faithful people out of pure compassion, he will do it in order to keep his reputation from being harmed. Other people in the Old Testament also made this kind of appeal to God, particularly Moses. Thou wilt bring me out of this snare which they have hidden from me, for thou art my protector. Even when our enemies set traps for us, God can be trusted to protect us. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, the God of truth. The words quoted by Jesus on the cross, and they mean the same thing here. We entrust God with the fate of our souls because we know he wants to save us. Thou hast hated them that regard vanities to no purpose. But I have hoped in the Lord. Vanity, in this case, refers to something that doesn't last, and regard means to take them very seriously or respectfully. God dislikes when people place more importance on earthly things and on the need for eternal life and a good relationship with him. However, as we've said before, God doesn't actually hate anyone. He can hate sinfulness in our choices, but not the people who commit them. Remember, God is all-loving, so he loves everything. Sin is not a thing in and of itself, but just a lack of some good thing that should be present, like, in this case, proper priorities. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast regarded my humility. Thou hast saved my soul out of distresses, and thou hast not shut me up in the hands of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a spacious place. We should be thankful to God because he considers our humility important and is always there to receive the faithful, no matter what their enemies may try to do to them. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am afflicted. My eye is troubled with wrath, my soul and my belly. We ask for mercy because we see so much violence and chaos in our lives that it affects us spiritually and emotionally. The belly here is a reference to our emotions. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years in sighs. My strength is weakened through poverty, and my bones are disturbed. At the time, eternal life didn't seem like a realistic prospect, and since almost everyone lived in the midst of conflict and want, causing tremendous damage to them, both spiritually and physically, it's not hard to see why they would ask why their lives were being wasted. Our own strength often feels like it's seeping away, and we know about Jesus' message of faithfulness in heaven. I am become a reproach among all my enemies, and very much to my neighbors, and a fear to my acquaintance. They that saw me without fled from me. I am forgotten as one dead from the heart. I am become as a vessel that is destroyed. We often feel this way when we experience hard times and people refuse to help us. This is especially the case with those who embrace unpopular positions. We're alienated by others who turn against us. We can feel very alone, but as long as we remain faithful to God, we'll never be truly alone. For I have heard the blame of many that dwell round about. While they assembled together against me, they consulted to take away my life. The worst kind of loneliness is the kind where people not only turn against you, but actually plot and scheme against your very life. Many people know what that's like now, but it used to be much more common for the rich and powerful like King David. In fact, even before he became a king, the cowardly King Saul schemed to kill him numerous times. But I have put my trust in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. However, even the schemes of powerful men are nothing compared to Almighty God. 
we need to trust him to help us get through the circumstances and challenges of our lives. My lots are in thy hands. Deliver me out of the hands of my enemies, and from them that persecute me. Deliver me out of their hands means remove me from their power. David is asking that his enemies will no longer have the power to harm him, a relevant prayer at basically any point in his life. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me in thy mercy. Let me not be confounded, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed and be brought down to hell. We're justified in asking for our enemies to suffer the worst possible fate, not out of some desire to harm them, but because we want ourselves and others to witness the great justice of Almighty God. Let deceitful lips be made dumb, which speak iniquity against the just with pride and abuse. If people are only going to use their words to lie and spread false accusations, they'd be better off not speaking at all. Oh, how great is the multitude of thy sweetness, O Lord, which thou hast hidden from them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that hope in thee, in the sight of the sons of men. God has made every good thing in the world, many of which can only be seen and appreciated by those who remain faithful to God. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy face from the disturbance of men. Thou shalt protect them in thy tabernacle from the contradiction of tongues. While the many good things on this earth are ruined and destroyed by horrible, scummy people, the things that God keeps for his saints can never be ruined or destroyed. Blessed be the Lord, for he hath shewn his wonderful mercy to me in a fortified city. God can protect people through miraculous intervention, or just by inspiring other people to guard them well. But I said, in the excess of my mind, I am cast away from before thy eyes. Therefore, thou hast heard the voice of my prayer when I cried to thee. When we remain humble, God is ready to listen to our prayers. O oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord will require truth, and will repay them abundantly that act proudly. Repay, in this case, is not a positive thing. It means that the proud will suffer because the very existence of a perfect God proves that no person has the right to be proud of themselves or their own accomplishments. Pride, remember, means thinking you're better than everyone else, a feat that can't be accomplished when someone exists who is so obviously superior. Do ye manfully, and let your heart be strengthened, all ye that hope in the Lord. If we hope for the mercy of God, we should always have confidence in him and determination to do the right thing, taking the right action with boldness. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.